solve for exact values. Okay, so this is the other case uh, where we need to solve for exact values. So in this case, we're going to start by solving by factoring, and you'll see that we'll have to solve for exact values eventually here. Okay, so to solve this by factoring, or to begin solving it by factoring, we'll have to use our four-step process to apply the factor theorem. And remember, the uh, first step of our process is to find a root of our polynomial and then determine the corresponding factor and divide our polynomial by that factor. So I'm going to call this polynomial p of x, and we're looking for the values of x that would set p of x to 0. Um, remember, the potential roots that we should check should have numerators that are factors of the constant term, which is negative 1. It has factors plus or minus 1 and denominators that are factors of the leading coefficient. In this case, the leading coefficient is 2. It has factors plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Oops, 2. OK, so let's do step 1 of our four-step process. Let's start by evaluating p of positive and negative 1, um, which comes from a numerator of plus or minus 1 and a denominator of plus or minus 1. So p of positive 1. I can tell you right away, will not give us 0. We'll have 2 plus 15, which is 17, minus 7, which is 10. So this is not 0. A similar analysis for negative 1. We'll have negative 2 plus 15 uh, plus 6. Um, so negative 2 plus 6 will give us 4. Plus 15 gives us 19. Minus 1 gives us 18. So this is not 0. So let's move on to plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 2, so we'll have plus or minus 1 half. Let's try positive 1 half. That'll leave us with 2 times 1 half cubed plus 15 times a half squared minus 6 times a half minus 1. Okay, so 1 half cubed is 1 eighth, so this will be 2 over 8, which we can reduce to 1 over 4. Then we'll have 15 times a half squared, so that'll be 15 times a quarter, or 15 over 4. Then we'll have minus 6 times a half, which is just going to be minus 3. And then we have minus 1. Okay, so uh, 1 quarter plus 15 quarters gives us 16 quarters, which is 4. So this evaluates to 4. And then we have minus 3 minus 1. So we'll have 4 minus 3 minus 1, which is, of course, 0. So that means that 1 half is a root, and the factor associated with 1 half we can get by rearranging this equation. So I like to multiply both sides by 2, which gives us 2x equals 1, and then we subtract 1 from both sides to leave us with 2x minus 1 as our factor. This way we don't have any uh, fractions in our factor. So if you had gone with a potential factor of x minus a half, I would definitely multiply that through by 2 before continuing. So 2x minus 1 is the factor that we're looking for. Okay, now in step 2 here, we're going to divide our polynomial by this factor. So we'll take p of x and divide by 2x minus 1. We can't do this synthetically, so I'll have to use long division. So I'll take 2x minus 1, divide it into p of x, which is 2x cubed plus 15x squared minus 6x minus 1. So I'm going to ask myself, what do I multiply 2x by to get 2x cubed? The answer is x squared. So then I multiply x squared by 2x minus 1 to leave me with 2x cubed minus x squared. And now I subtract this from the polynomial above which means that the signs of both of these terms will flip. So we'll have a negative here, a positive here. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed gives me 0. 15x squared plus x squared gives me 16x squared. Now I'll bring down the negative 6x, and I ask myself, what do I multiply 2x by to get 16x squared? The answer is positive 8x, so I write that up top. Then I multiply 8x by 2x minus 1. That gives me 16x squared from 8x times 2x. And then we have 8x times minus 1, which will give me negative 8x. Now I subtract these. 
Um, so the signs will flip. We'll have a negative here, positive here. So we have 16x squared minus 16x squared, which gives me zero. Negative 6x plus 8x, which gives me 2x. And I'll bring down the negative one. Maybe I'll make that a little clearer, like so. Get rid of this zero. And now I ask myself, what do I multiply 2x minus one by to get, or sorry, what do I multiply 2x by to get 2x? The answer is one. Then I multiply one times 2x minus one, which will just give me 2x minus one again. And then subtracting, we'll flip the signs of both of these terms. So I'll have a negative and a positive. And 2x minus 2x gives me zero. Negative one plus one also gives me zero. So that's what we expect, a remainder of zero, since we know that 2x minus one is a factor of this polynomial. So here's our quotient expression. As you can see, it's already quadratic. So in step three, where we're supposed to repeat steps one and two until we have a quadratic quotient, we don't need to do any work. We can just write this quadratic quotient, like so, x squared plus eight x plus one. Now onto step four, we need to factor this quadratic, but there's a catch. If you look at this quadratic, um, it's actually not factorable. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to one and add to eight? Probably not. So in order to solve for the values of x that set this factor to zero, we actually have to apply the quadratic formula. And that's why we say that we are solving for exact values in this case. So remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a where a is the coefficient on the x squared term, b is the coefficient on the x term, and c is the coefficient on the x to the zero term, or in other words, the constant term. Okay, so um, let's just plug in our numbers. x equals negative b, so that'll be negative eight, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is eight squared, or 64, minus four times a times c. So a is one, c is one, so we'll just have minus four, all over two a. a is one, so this will just be over two. So continuing to simplify a little bit here, we'll have negative eight plus or minus the square root of 64 minus four, or 60, all over two. 60 has a square factor of four, so we could rewrite 60 as uh, four times 15. That's still all over two. And then we can take the square root of four to bring it out front. So we'll have x equals negative eight plus or minus the square root of four, which is two times the square root of 15, all over two. And then we can actually um, cancel a factor of two in this V shape like so. So the negative eight will be reduced to negative four. The positive or plus or minus two will be re reduced to plus or minus one. So we'll just have negative four plus or minus the square root of 15. Now keep in mind, earlier we found that x equals one half was another solution to our equation. So if we put all of our solutions together, we have x equals negative four minus the square root of 15, negative four plus the square root of 15, and one half. So these are the three solutions to this equation. We have negative four minus the square root of 15, negative four plus the square root of 15, and positive one half.